welcome to the Enchantress Society with Tia Johnson, a place where you get to be you, where you get to unlock your magic in a sacred and judgment-free zone. The Enchantress Society is your witchy sisterhood of enchanting women who guides and supports you along your spiritual journey from the mundane to the magical. I invite you to sit for a spell as I interview guests and spill the spiritual tea on how we can create the magical life we deserve. Hello, Enchantress, and welcome back. I am so thrilled for this episode because I love highlighting people, all their great accomplishments, letting them tell their story, all that jazz. So let's get into it. The student spotlight with Miss Brittany Bordeaux of the Goddess Mastery Mastermind. She was one of the students that was just so active and the live Q&A, doing her work, and I love it. So yes, Brittany, welcome. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, so as I was saying right before we were recording, I really appreciate you being, you know, brave to tell your story and and really come on this platform because I know it's not easy and a lot of people's uh, spiritual journey is personal to them. So I thank you so much for doing this. You're welcome. Yes, yes. So please tell the listeners a bit about who you are. Oh, wow. How to, how to nail down <laughs> being a human being into a few words. I would, right. uh, I'm, I'm hesitant. I want to throw out my, my astrological science, but <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I would just say like, I'm just a, a wandering light. Like I'm just, uh, you know, making my way. I love to travel. I love to help other people when I can and discover new things. And I'm always searching um, for something to be a better person. And I love learning and, and meeting wonderful people like you. So that, that's, that's a bit of what I do. <laughs> nice, nice. I, I love that because there is, or there are a lot of beautiful things that happen when we go on this journey of, you know, just going out there and discovering things. I remember when we were talking during the live Q&A, how you were just saying how you live a different lifestyle, how you travel and the things that you've done in the process. And so for you know people who are listening, who are thinking like, man, I want to live a lifestyle that's different. What are some of the, the, the tips that you can give them? I would say, I think the first thing that comes to mind is courage, which comes from the Latin word for heart. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it really does take a certain amount of bravery to go against the grain, to go against what your family's always done, to go against any kind of um, plot line that society may have laid out for you and to really get in touch with your with yourself and to get quiet and think about what is it that I really want like it may be that you have a military family or an entrepreneurial family or an academic family but what do you really want to do and I feel Mm -hmm. like that's the first step is to get in touch with your own desires but then the second and scariest step is that you have to take that step towards your desires and that's where you really need that courage to go against the grain because some of those steps you have to take alone. Oof, yeah, taking those steps alone. And that that's a pretty big order. A, a lot of people, you know, and it's normal to to think like, oh yeah, you know, I want to take so and so with me and like let's let's go on this journey. I remember when I was just starting to learn about goddesses, I wanted to tell a few people about it you know, in a very slow manner, you know, because this was also very new to me. And I felt like this is going to be crazy. So, (laughs) you know, you got to like take those little steps to go out there, you know, and it's not going to be for everyone. And, and you'll learn over time, you know, the facial expressions, not that people mean any harm. 
is sometimes that they don't get it. It's not for them. And you got to realize, oh, this is a personal journey. And that that takes a lot for people to continue on knowing that it's a, a journey of one. Absolutely. I think you have to be comfortable with yourself and with your mm-hmm. choice, because if it's truly your interest, it's like, you know, it, it would be great to have, you know, a buddy who goes with you on every single adventure and, you know, <laughs> but I feel like life, you know, rarely happens that way. But if you're truly pursuing something because you're interested in it, then you have to be comfortable with some parts of that are going to be alone, but you're also going to be thoroughly entertained. Like there is no end to, you know, the levels of fascination when you start delving into the things that truly light you up. Oh, for sure. And spirit has jokes. So (laughs) 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 I want to say it's never a dull moment, but sometimes it gets a little bit like, all right, you need to like chill spirit. Like you (laughs) There are many talks, you know. <laughs> Sperry got a lot of jokes. <laughs> Certainly. So when it came to the Goddess Mastery course, what were some of the things that drew you to to the course to to be part of it and, and not just, you know, look at it from the outside? What, what was that or one factor or several factors that you were just like, oh, yeah, I, this course is for me? I would say I was already on my uh, spiritual journey and I was looking for, uh, I don't know if if I was looking for a course per se, but I was looking for something. (laughs) And they say when the student is ready, the teacher appears in your course and you (laughs) appeared when I was looking for something. But um, I, I think I read the description of the course, but I think you were on Instagram live and I caught your like part of your live and I really liked your energy and I was like oh she is rocking the purple hair like I want to know more about like (laughs) how does she have you know this confidence to rock purple hair like this is a lifestyle and then that made me more interested to look into what you were going to teach into the course. And then I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in. Like, I want to know how, like, how she got this. Like, how did she, she get here? And that's what intrigued me. Uh, I, I love it. My, my Gemini and rising is just loving that because all that communication. <laughs> I'm just like, yay, Instagram live. <laughs> because the thing is, I'm such a naturally wordy person. Like, I love words. I love writing. And I'm always trying to figure out how can I make this straight bullet points where, where it's just like, boom, boom, boom. Cause I don't like long landing pages. I never did. Mm-hmm. And I, I just got, <clears throat> excuse me, used to it over the years because for so long it was, you got to explain to people, explain to people. But I started to think, well, the people who are attracted to me think similarly to me and they probably don't like long landing pages (laughs) but they may be discovering me for the first time so I go back and forth between that so I really lean more towards the Instagram lines to really show who I am because I know it's it's a lot to read and I always skim over people's landing pages and go by their vibe and their interaction more so than reading, you know, pages <laughs> of this planning was going down. That's a very good point. Yeah, I did notice that you did have a different style in writing versus uh, talking. But I find that there are some people, they will have like a 10 page landing page and it will be like the price. There's no price. There's no like, what days are we meeting? How often are we meeting? How long is this course? I'm like, but you spent 10 pages and like, I still don't have the most important information. Like I know your life story, but I don't have the information (laughs) about this course. And so I definitely appreciated the brevity because I think sometimes with writing, like there's no one to stop you. Like if you're talking to someone, you can see their eyes kind of glaze over and you're like, okay, let me wrap this up. But mm-hmm. when you're writing and it's just you in that tunnel, you're just like, oh, let me get creative. And you get in the zone and you start getting ideas. 
<laughs> and they just mm-hmm. flow and it's just like all of a sudden you have a 10 page landing page and it's just like yeah now I don't even know what your course is about I'm not interested I'm not going to read all this but it's very interesting that when you talk to you like you're so vivacious you're hilarious like I love it it's witty it's great it's fantastic so I like that dichotomy in your communication style Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because I, I figure, you know, people can, they can skim, which is why I have like the join now button so many places. So it's just like, if you're tired of reading, I get it. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and you just scroll, you, know, like, you could just hit that button and get to the good part. That's how I am. How many weeks, what's involved, uh, you know, payment plans, whatever, like, let, let's get to the nitty gritty, because at that point, at least for me, I already have enough information about the person when I'm at their landing page. I figure like once you go to the website, you are intrigued because there's something you saw elsewhere that's making you go to that page. So I try to make it as like boom, boom, boom as possible. And so what, what were some of the changes you noticed before, during, and then we can also, of course, get to the after. But I just wanted to, to just break it up as, as uh, what were some of the changes before you took the course, during you took the course, while you were taking the course, and then <laughs> afterwards. I'm like, come on, dude, before, during, after, you can do this. Damn it. <laughs> sometimes when I'm saying something mid-sentence, I already think of another sentence. I'm like, slow down, brain. Slow down. All right. So before, during, and after, what were the changes? Where were you and what were the changes? Oh, that's so funny. Oh, I would say, <laughs> I would say before I was, um, hmm, God is curious, maybe. <laughs> Coming up with a new term here. There you go, there oh. you go. <laughs> um, I was curious. I was um, interested in, like embodying myself more, like getting more in tune with my true self and just just improving somehow. And then I would say during the course, I think it ended up being kind of different than I thought because uh, I think you mentioned this in one of your lives where it wasn't just like, okay, here's a study, like here is, you know, Isis and what she means. And here's Athena and what she means. It's like, no, no, no. I'm going to take you back to the basics, work on your boundaries. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I really liked that though, because I felt like I definitely needed that. And I feel like a lot of times in our society as a whole that we focus a lot of times on the outside packaging. It's like, I can go buy a nice dress and put a wreath on my head and call myself a goddess. But if I haven't (laughs) done, you know, the inner work, like Mm -hmm. it's it's just a pretty photo. Um, And so I felt like that's when the changes really started was during the foundational part of the course when you're talking about like really just protecting yourself and having boundaries and then when I started enacting this in my life I was like oh like oh look at the whiplash like oh this person is reacting like this like oh okay (laughs) I remember when Tia said that oh look out like it was just (laughs) so interesting to see in real time I feel like sometimes a lot of the change that we go through is really slow but it's like that was quite fast and I still think about you and like some of the things that you said and I'll be like like if someone says something to me I'm like stay away from those muggles and then I'll just keep going (laughs) about my business and then I'm like no I remember when Tia said that um so I feel like that was a really huge change for me um especially as an empath, as a sensitive person, as someone who does like to help others and be of service to know where to draw that line and to be useful, but not to be used. And I felt like Mm -hmm. that's just made this huge difference in my life that I'm going to take with me, you know, for the rest of my life. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, And then I guess I would say after the course, it's, it's just made me more aware, I think, in general, 
um, Mm -hmm. more aware. I feel like I've tapped into my femininity more. I'm more like uh, trying to, um, now I'm losing my words. (laughs) I'm trying to experiment (laughs) with my style more. I'm trying to think about like what the highest version or highest expression of me would do. Like I paint my nails more before just my eh, whatever, or that's for special occasions. Like I am the special occasion. Ooh, I like that. I am the special occasion. Put that on a shirt. (laughs) I like that. (laughs) And it's like, you know, I wear a lot more dresses and I feel like the way I carry myself out into the world is a bit different because my energy has changed from the inside out. It's like, I'll mm-hmm. notice more people will, um, more men will open doors for me and things like that. Um, so I feel like it's really just helped me tap into myself, my truest self, my highest self, and kind of just get rid of some of the things that were not me, some just old baggage, and get rid of that and tap into the goddess within. So, I mean, that's priceless. (laughs) Man, that is so beautiful. And my heart is just melting. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And for everyone listening, this is literally how our live Q&As went. Lots of laughter, lots of storytelling, (laughs) (laughs) lots and lots of fun. And also, I I love how you continue with the lessons. It's easy to stop once everything's over. Like, okay, that was a good run, and I'll implement it here and there. But you, you are also maintaining a certain level with yourself and you're progressing all the time. So I love that that's something uh, that is happening as well. Yeah, I think that is that's one of the definitely one of the hardest things, a challenge, um, not just for me, but for people in general, like. Um, I, I'm always looking to improve, but it is, I think consistency is, is really mm-hmm. the hardest part of, of improvement or just doing something well. And I, I challenge myself, I guess, in small ways, like, okay, like, are you going to sit down and do this meditation today? Like maybe you couldn't do it in the morning, <laughs> but you have time at night, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it's like my meditation practice has become, you know, a daily practice and instead of more sporadic, um, pulling my cards has become a daily practice. And so I find that by adding these things, it doesn't have to be three hours. And it is nice when I have a day where I can spend three hours doing (laughs) right. I'm just in my own world. Like, Hey, right. By making them a daily practice, I feel like it really helps set the foundation. And I feel like that's part of the reason for the change and that it does take commitment. Like it's, 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 it's simple, but it's not easy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. No, I I love that. Yeah. Simple, but not easy. It's a lot of building blocks. Um, Even with the course it's five pillars, but it also breaks down into so much more. And mm-hmm. there are times where it's like, surprise, I, I remember one of the, <laughs> the live Q&As, you were just like, yeah, and then it went this one. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I think it was Barn, the Barnes uh, uh, Boundaries, Allies, Resentment and Network. I think it was that one where you're just like, yeah. oh. <laughs> yeah, it was that one. <laughs> <laughs> surprise. <laughs> And that's what I want people to also hear is that, you know, this is a really fun course too. Like I, it starts off light and yeah, it gets a little heavy, but then it also ends a little light. It's like a, a cool sandwich, <laughs> as a tackle, but, it, but you're going to leave satisfied and, and it's, it's going to be things that you can apply throughout your life and you have lifetime access to the course so that there's ever a chance where I update it. You're going to get the updates. Um, I do plan on having another retreat. I I don't know when. I had the first retreat based off the course in 2019, and then, you know, pandemic happened. So I'm not sure when I'm going to bring that back. But when I do, it's going to be a courtesy discount for those who took the course. So it's just the gift that keeps on giving, basically. And um, and that's one of the things I love to do is just, you know, be that follow-up. 
you know, like we are still connected on Instagram. This isn't one of those things where I'm just like, okay, yeah, you were there. Thank you. Bye. Like <laughs> you know, it's a continuation. <laughs> and and that's that's what I'm about is also fostering that that community and you know that support. Yeah, I would I would I'm gonna co-sign that for you. I found that you definitely have a very generous spirit and you were very like hey this resource check out this book this is my friend's book or this is my coach or this person has really good spiritual tools and I found that there are a lot of people in the spiritual community that they'll put you on to their um link (laughs) where they get the kickback (laughs) and that's the only type of like advice outside of their course that you will ever get and Mm -hmm. it's like so I found it very refreshing you know that you were so generous and it's just like you could feel the warmth even through the cold cold plasma screen (laughs) 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 you can really just feel the warmth and like how much you truly want to help and so that's just such a beautiful find I think Hello, Enchantress, making room inside this show for a quick announcement. I recently opened the doors to my Dark Fem Summer four-week one-on-one mentorship. This is a deep dive into what you want to change in your life, a four-week journey of deep discovery, healing, and expansion. We will be working with the dark goddesses and doing a little bit of spell work. This is a journey in which you will unleash the inner you and own it. Inside Dark Fem Summer, you will receive weekly 60-minute mentor and strategy sessions, and there will also be an initial kickoff 60-minute strategy session. I would love to see you inside the Dark Fem Summer mentorship. It would be an honor to work with you. It is always fun when I work with my students and clients. It's an adventure. Okay, so if you are ready to enroll, there are nine spaces available. I'm only opening up for 10 amazing souls. Click the link in the description of this episode and get set up. You have until July 1st, Friday. Send you so much love and blessings and I look forward to working with you. Thanks for saying that because I, I do tell people I'm here to help and they laugh a little bit because it's, it's almost like, wow, like someone's really here to help. It's like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, and I, I get it. Oh, you can go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I was just going to say it's because they probably run into the the, the other part, the other type mm-hmm. of people that I've talked about because I will say they are more plentiful than the U type. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's like, it, it sounds almost like one of those platitudes, like your high school guidance counselor, like, hey, I'm here to help. And then she has like 5,000 other students that you, you never see her again. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I have an appointment available in six months. You're like, I need help now. <laughs> right. So I think it's hard, like sometimes, and then, you know, a lot of people, you know, been traumatized or burned mm-hmm. and someone, someone is genuine and they're like, I want to help. They're like, yeah, I heard that before. <laughs> and they right, like, sure, hard lady. for them to believe it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I most definitely hear you. Uh, and, and that's why I'm glad that we're having this episode too, because now, you know, even more people can understand just how, like, um, a behind the scenes, like a true behind the scenes of one of my courses, because it's easy for me to say, Hey, like, yeah, I have live Q and a and they, they love it. And uh, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, lady. <laughs> like I'm here to help. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We heard that. We'll see. It's like, now nah, I, I have like a real live, you know, a, a more, a more recent testimonial. And, and it's, 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 it's also, I'm going to say real time, but you know, this is a recording, but really real time. So yeah, people have, you know, more insight as to, you know, the, the vibe, the environment and so forth. And so are you uh, working with multiple goddesses now? One goddess? How's that working for you? No goddesses? That's okay as well. 
Um, I would say I'm studying them more through the lens of astrology. And so they tend to be gods. And so sometimes what I'll do is try to look up um, the goddess counterpart. So for example, in my chart, um, I'm a Virgo rising and I have quite a few Gemini placements so Mercury is a very important planet Mm -hmm. and he was the messenger god and so when I'm looking I'm like okay you know what when I look at western astrology they're like uh, they're almost all gods except Venus and so then I looked up and I'm like okay so was there ever a messenger goddess and then I'm like okay Mm -hmm. there was one called Iris and I'm like cool like now we have the female counterpart so I can work with like the messenger goddess you know so Mm -hmm. I look at it kind of through that lens um to uh uh, go about it and I guess I I haven't chosen or I haven't been chosen uh, maybe by a specific goddess. I'm still maybe searching for my home goddess, if that makes sense. But mm-hmm. I feel like what has changed is that I've been, I've adjusted from the lens of deities being masculine, which I think is very dominant in Western culture. I think in mm-hmm. Eastern culture, it's much more common for them to be like, yes, we have gods and goddesses. Like, of course, why wouldn't we? You know, mm-hmm. and, and right. we're like, no, it's only a god. And so I feel like that's what's changed to me. I'm like, yes, Aphrodite would totally, she's the one that fits the bill for this particular situation. Like, absolutely. Or like, no, we, we need to throw down, let, let, it's Athena, like, come help me. Mm-hmm. Like, right. So that <laughs> that's what's changed for me. Or I, sometimes I'm like, oh, thank God. It's like, thank you for helping me. So it's more, I guess, working kind of just with whatever one seems to fit the bill at the moment. I, I haven't, I don't have a, a particular one yet. That's awesome. I, I love that. And that's also what uh, the course is also about is figuring out the beat to your own drum. And, you know, you don't have to work for an extended period of time with these goddesses. Sometimes you just work with them or for a long period of time, I should say. Sometimes it's just maybe during the course of, the, the mastermind and maybe it's a little bit longer I remember when I started off I was just all about super connected with Isis super connected with Bridget and it made sense at the time because Isis she put her husband back together and it was like okay I was quote-unquote like this member putting myself back together with the deprogramming reprogramming and, you know, Bridget was just there illuminating my path. I mean, she was just so powerful coming up there. for So for so many years, in particular, it was Isis and Bridget. And while I have other goddesses in my first book who I worked with that helped me uh, during uh, multiple years, it was really focused on Isis and Bridget. Then it just transitioned over time. And now the Hecate had appeared in my dreams with the Morgan. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> like, I, like, there are some deities that pop up. I'm just like, I don't even know who, like, I, I literally one time went to a store. I may have told you this during one of the live Q&As, and it was, it was a male deity. I, I had no clue. And I went to this the medical, physical, metaphysical store that I typically go to to get candles and stuff like that. And there was a statue of him there. I almost jumped out my skin. I'm like, oh my God, who is that? I was like, what? So sometimes literally they appear in my dreams and then I learn about them or I may see like something about them. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. And then it's like, wow. So I I love that you are also, you know, forming that path for you to see what works for you because what I tell people is, you know, take what works for you. You can leave the rest behind. And sometimes when you circle back, more things make sense, but this isn't, you know, stone cold, like you got to follow all this this way or it's not going to work. It's like, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, take it all in stride. And sometimes things just have to unravel first and, and then you'll get more of it. But meanwhile, you know, cre- create your own path. Yeah, I find the circling back is definitely helpful and just reading 
different stories uh, about the goddesses. I was looking at actually at an Isis Oracle deck the last time I went to a metaphysical store and just looking at, at some of them and some of their stories, like you said, I, how Isis's story resonated with you at a particular point in your life. I just find their their stories to be really fascinating and sometimes they're just super inspiring. You're just like, wow, like, what a woman. Like, wow, right? what a goddess. <laughs> like, woo! <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So second to final question, what would you tell someone who is on a fence, if you're thinking about taking that step, they want to take the course, they're a little bit nervous, you know, whether it's the investment or the, the, um, the, the mental part of devoting time being committed to, I think it takes, I think ever like an hour, two hours a week, roughly per something. Cause you, you get a lot of time to, it's at your own pace. But w- what would you say to someone who's on the fence? They, they want to purchase, they want to get involved, but they're just like, I don't know. I'm scared. I'm concerned. All that jazz. I would say that if it's in your heart, jump <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's the basic line if it's in your heart jump and I guess a bigger breakdown of that would be that a lot of times that we feel fear when we do really want to do something because we uh our subconscious senses that there's something great on the other side of that but it wants to keep us in safety um and so even if something is good, it can feel unsafe because it's new. And Mm. what I would say about the course is is that it is definitely self-paced. Like you have enough time. Like there were times where I was, you know, didn't study um, all, I guess, all of the pillar beforehand, but we just talked about what I did study. And then I would just catch up in like the next two weeks. So I feel like even if you're busy, if you're working, if you're a mom, if you're an entrepreneur, you'll still have enough time to do that and just go in with an open mind. And I don't think you can walk out of that course without being changed and without feeling like you took something away from that. Um, it's, It's just that type of experience. Love it. It's an experience. <laughs> any, <laughs> final, any final words on that note? That may have been your final words. I don't know. But <laughs> any final words? <laughs> no, I just, I just, um, I just hope they enjoy it as much as I did. And I hope I get to hear like the other students podcast and see what they took away from it. Like that would be really interesting. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So hopefully uh, I sent more emails out and sometimes it's it's one of those things that they're just like, ah, you know, like, uh." (laughs) we have, I I get it. Yeah. Yeah, truly. And uh, I know um, Nadia, for example, I interviewed her years ago and she takes the chorus every year. She was telling me, I I do a refresher every year. And so, uh, Maybe she'll come on the podcast next, but uh, it, it was a pleasure talking to her as well. And uh, the other ones, I hope, I hope so, because I, I really want people to be able to share their story because it's something that is so uplifting and healing in a way, but I will never pressure anyone to do that. But maybe one day they will respond and like, oh, you know what, Tia? <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Maybe they'll yeah. do it at the retreat. <laughs> Maybe they'll do it at the retreat. Yeah. I, and th- that's why I stress that, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, go at your own pace. You have it for a lifetime. And I had some people respond like, oh, I didn't finish it. I moved and things like that. I'm like, it's okay. I know life happens. This is one of the reasons why it's for a lifetime. So, you know, it's also me reassuring them that I'm not mad like there are no hard feelings it's just you know things happen when you're ready I am here and we'll get you on the podcast so you're one of those students listening (laughs) (laughs) all right my third eye is mentally looking at you (laughs) I'm just I'm just messing with you guys but anyway Brittany thank you so much for being on the show it was 
such a pleasure. <clears throat> Excuse me, as always, I know people are going to benefit from hearing your story and you know your experiences, all that jazz, and they they got to see our banter, which is exactly how it was during the live Q and A. <laughs> so uh, you know, again, thank you so 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 much. <clears throat> You're most welcome. All right, everyone. I am sending you so much love, magical blessings. I am rooting for you. Stay away from muggles. Be kind to yourself. (laughs) Until next time.